So tomorrow I am getting the COVID-19 vaccine. This is a day that many of us have been looking forward to and with the pandemic pretty much closing everything early on in 2020, many look to a vaccine to contain the spread of the virus and to try bring back our normal lives. So here's the current situation. At the time of filming, there have been a confirmed 3 million cases of COVID-19 in the UK and almost 82,000 deaths as well. With the growing rates, the British government has enforced a new national lockdown, which we are currently under in. Hospitals are getting overwhelmed and things are getting really bad. Now, since the first jab back in December 8th, as part of the mass vaccination program, the rollout of vaccines is now extended from the first group, which was people in care homes, into a second group, which includes people who are over 80 and also frontline health and social care workers. And now as a med student who's still going into hospitals and clinics as part of my placement i am also part of this group being vaccinated there's so much information out there on covid19 the vaccine it's easy to kind of fall down a rabbit hole of misinformation so i wanted to share my experience getting the vaccine to show you what it was like and to show you what happened after and to also kind of go over some information about the current situation to help inform others to ultimately help them decide if they want to get the vaccine or not. So before jumping into my personal experience, I wanted to just go over some of the basics about the vaccine. Around April, a vaccine task force was set up in order to speed up the process of producing a vaccine that was going to be safe and effective for our population. Now, it normally takes several years to produce one and to combat this, teams worked across the globe seamlessly as quickly as they could in order to produce a safe and effective vaccine. Now all these trials have been subject to the same strict regulatory requirements. Before any COVID-19 vaccine can be given to the general public, it has to be proven to be safe and effective. Any reactions reported so far are similar to what is seen with other vaccines such as pain and tenderness at the site that you get the injection, fever, headaches, and fatigue. Although there may be some expected side effects, the risk of this is much more than the benefits that outweigh this of preventing deaths and preventing serious complications from COVID-19. Much of this can be proved by the studies done so far, and ongoing studies will continue to look at long-term surveillance for things like whether or not the immunity is long-lasting and whether the vaccine prevents a vaccinated person from spreading the virus. So the two approved vaccines at the time of filming right now in the UK are number one, the Pfizer vaccine, and number two, the AstraZeneca one. The COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer is a mRNA vaccine, and mRNA, as you may remember from your GCSE biology days, is involved in things like transcription and translation to help produce proteins in your body. So this vaccine contains the genetic sequence for the spike protein which is on the surface of SARS-CoV-2 and it's wrapped in a lipid envelope to enable it to be transported into your body. When the vaccine is injected into the body, the host cells take up this genetic sequence and then produce these spike proteins which are then displayed on the surface of cells. This stimulates your immune system to produce antibodies and activate T-cells, which prepare your immune system for any future exposure to SARS-CoV-2. As there is no whole or live virus, this vaccine cannot give you the disease. To reiterate, this vaccine cannot give you COVID-19. And the mRNA will naturally degrade after a couple of days. Also, if you're interested, here's a list of the ingredients in this vaccine as well. In this list of ingredients, there's nothing toxic like aluminium or mercury. Now, the study for the Pfizer vaccine was a randomized controlled trial, which involved 43,548 participants who were then split up into two groups to either receive the two doses of the vaccine or receive a placebo. Now, the results of the trial were that the vaccine was safe and was also found to be 95% effective against preventing COVID-19. There were eight cases of COVID-19 with onset of at least seven days after the second dose among those assigned to receive the vaccine. And this is compared against 162 cases in the group that received just the placebo. So an important thing to note is that the study is still ongoing. So there'll be more findings to come as we go on. Also, the study didn't focus on endpoints like transmission. And so future studies should really try and look into this as well. The AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is a viral vector vaccine, which uses a weakened adenovirus to act as a carrier to deliver the SARS-CoV-2 antigen. The adenovirus has been modified so that it can't replicate inside human cells. And therefore, this vaccine cannot cause disease. The genes that encode for the spike protein found on SARS-CoV-2 have been encoded into the genetic sequence on this weakened adenovirus. When the vaccine is injected, it enters the host cells, which then manufacture the spike protein. This then stimulates the immune system and helps to produce antibodies and also producing memory cells to the SARS-CoV-2 virus without causing disease. So the study for the AstraZeneca vaccine 
was another randomized controlled trial which involved 11,636 participants who were then split up into two groups to either receive the vaccine or the placebo. Now, the interesting thing is the participants who received two standard doses in Brazil showed a efficacy of 62.1% and the participants in the UK who received one and a half doses showed a 90% efficacy. Now, the overall vaccine efficacy across both groups was 70.4%. I know that compared to the vaccine trial, this value seems like a smaller value, but this study still demonstrates that the vaccine is safe and effective at preventing COVID-19 for a good proportion of the participants. So, whew, all right, with that out the way, let's jump into my experience. Now, let's rewind a couple of days ago to the start of term two, where I was continuing on with my GP placement. But as it was a new lockdown, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen to my placement, and I wasn't really sure what was happening with being vaccinated. So after arriving at the GP on my first day and asking around a little bit, they really quickly organized a booking so that I could get a vaccination and they set up a booking with a vaccination center which was literally just next door. They told me that I was gonna be receiving the Pfizer vaccine. Fast forward to that night, I got a text asking me what time I exactly wanted for the next day. I booked that slot, got my confirmation, and boom, we were ready to go. So the following day, I actually had a day off and I had my appointment for 6.10 in the evening, which I know is a little late for, I guess, like, going to the doctors or any sort of med related appointment, but this is the one that I got. So after making my way to the center, there were lines of people depending on the slot time that they had booked. I think there was maybe about 10 to 15 people and we were all organized into lines for our respective booking times. So when it was finally my turn, I went in and sat down with a volunteer who asked me for my details and filled it in for me. So she asked if I had any symptoms recently, if I had received a vaccine at all recently, and if I had any allergies. I was then moved into the next area where I sat and wait for my turn to get the vaccine. Now I have to say a massive props to the whole team at this center who were literally cleaning as soon as you got up from your chair to the next place and it was reassuring to see that. Soon enough it was my turn and they were nice enough to let me film. Did you get any sort of mild symptoms like headaches or anything? Would you still recommend? Uh, is it okay if I still go in, or would you advise? What would you advise them? Uh, so I think if you've got mild symptoms, you don't have fever, you don't have uh, loss of sense of smell. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. Uh, so uh, which one do you prefer? Oh, I don't mind. Yes. So I'll give you one of this, this tells you the batch number. Yep. Uh, and it tells you the date you had it. Sure. Uh, also, I realized that filming this could have been done in a better angle. I thought that this was a good angle, but I ended up getting more of the doctor's butt instead of the jab. But as proof, uh, I'll show you guys the card that I was given with the vaccine that I was given, which I have to bring to my next appointment to get my second dose. So I was then told to wait in a room for 15 minutes. And the reason that they were doing this was to check if anyone had any sort of allergic reactions to the vaccine and so that they could monitor it right after giving it. But yeah, that was my pretty much my experience. It was pretty streamlined. It was really organized. They like ushered you where you needed to go. And I think the experience was a lot nicer than I thought it would have been. All right guys, so it's the morning after the vaccine and so far I'm feeling pretty good. There's nothing too major to report on. I think the only thing I can know of is the arm soreness from yesterday has gotten a little bit worse and I think I noticed that a bit more this morning when I rolled over to get out of bed. Besides that, no fever, no chills, no headaches, which is all really good. So let's hope that stays that way. But I think I'll update you guys in about a week's time. So see you guys in a week. <coughs> All right guys, so it's now been a full week since I've had the COVID vaccine. And since then, the arm soreness that I had has now gone away. And yeah, that was pretty much it. I feel good now. Um, no fever, no chills, nothing like that. 
and from seeing other people get the vaccine uh, online and on YouTube and things like that and also just speaking to my friends who also got the vaccine it seems like getting some arm soreness was pretty common I think besides that I know some people who did get a fever the day after but that only lasted a day or two in terms of my second dose I'm not too sure when exactly I'm getting it Initially, the plan was to give it three weeks after you get your first dose and that was what was recommended But the government has pushed that back and extended it to a maximum of I think about three months And the reason they've done that is because they want to try and give the vaccine the first dose anyways to as many people as they can to give them some degree of immunity and then they'll give the second dose but anyways i think this is something which i can kind of go into a bit more depth in another video i guess to wrap up the video i think i want to address those who are hesitant on getting the vaccine when you hear the COVID-19 vaccine and when you just think of vaccine in general and when you hear people who seem to be against it you might jump to the thought of people who are anti-vax but I think for this situation there are a lot of people who are quite hesitant to get the vaccine and it's likely for a number of reasons so these are people who are not necessarily anti-vax but who may have some questions on things like the speed of the development for the vaccine I also attached a interesting article by Peter Doshi who is one of the editors at the British Medical Journal the BMJ. And to quote how he starts off the whole article, only full transparency and rigorous scrutiny of the data will allow for informed decision making. And I agree, I think there's still a lot of research to be done. And I think this data will be super important for improving the confidence in the public for the vaccine. And so just as a disclaimer, this was my personal experience with the vaccine and this was some information about the vaccine as well. I just wanted to share my experience in order to raise awareness and to just kind of have a little bit of insight about what it's like to receive the vaccine in the UK. I strongly encourage everyone to do their own proper research from credible sources so that they can make the best informed decision for their own health and for their loved ones so that we can really do the best against this virus. And I've also added down below a couple of videos that I found really useful for understanding the vaccine and other things that are going on right now. That wraps up this video. It definitely was a different type of video. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye.